Another week and more recruiting news. Brad Gale here with Hondo Carpenter. It is fourth and one Michigan State recruiting. We are just outside Spartan Stadium. A few days after Michigan State finally got that offense clicking, Hondo, it's good to be back and it's good to see that offense back on the field. It's like a whole weight's been lifted. I realize it was a 1AA team, but you have to admit it was tangible. You could feel the pressure around here. And at least everyone's like, yeah, it was a 1AA team, but there is some at least brevity. And we finally have a quarterback in place here at Michigan State. Mark D'Antonio saying Tuesday, Connor Cook walking around with a little bit of confidence around these parts, which for him is a good thing considering what they've had going on here on offense. Absolutely. Now, just in case anyone's wondering, because I'm getting a lot of questions, as I know you are, Brad, if there's a situation they got to go to the number two quarterback, it right. says Maxwell or Tyler O'Connor, it's going to be Maxwell. Maxwell's the guy going forward. Unless there's a big lead, it's going to be Andrew Maxwell's that number two guy. So the offense is back. Let's get into our recruiting four downs. Each week we give you four points where we discuss recruiting news, what's going on with visits, the impact that games are having on recruiting, and that's where we're started first down. This offense, as you said last week, mm -hmm. had been anemic. Mm -hmm. The defense is one of the best in the country. What kind of effect does that have on recruiting when people are looking at the school? Well, let's start offensively. One of the top recruits in the country that's being recruited by Michigan State and some other very big schools, I've mentioned some of those schools to you off camera, uh, really likes Mark D'Antonio, likes Mark D'Antonio being a man of faith that really appeals to him because he's one also. But he was getting texts from BCS, big time football coaches. This is a top recruit. A top recruit. Okay. After Michigan State's first two games saying, do you really think you're going to play in that? You know, and again, is that negative recruiting? I don't think so. I think it's saying watch the game. Yeah. In fact, one coach told them last week, do me a favor. Don't commit till you've seen Michigan State's offense at least six games. So it was being used against them. So I'm going to tell you this, going down to South Bend, touchdown Jesus, it's a, it's, you know, it's a place to go. Michigan State's offense, even more for the win, when you talk future in recruiting, they're going to have to continue to show signs of life because their offense is being used against them in recruiting. It's been a problem for not just four weeks. It's been a problem for a couple of years now. Where the 16 offense, games. Right. Hasn't had an identity whatsoever. Le'Veon Bell was the saving grace last year. And so I understand that as a recruit looking around saying, how do I fit into this offense? What kind of offense is this? Well, I'll tell you what, for the last 15 of the last 16 games, I would have rather taken a shower with the lights on that was so ugly than watch the Michigan State offense, Brad. But I'll tell you what, my friend, you know, they needed to show life. They yeah. needed to show some spunk. It's going to have an impact on recruiting. But let's go to the other side of the okay. ball. Michigan State can walk into any home in America of a top defensive recruit go against any school and they're going to get their attention they're going to talk to them they're going to listen to them because michigan state says hey the tape don't lie the same thing that other schools are doing to them on offense they're doing with defense and they're saying look at the guys we're putting in the nfl so and it's a double-edged sword but hey let's just get that offense moving along and have it help us huh i know for example even last season john Reschke was an all-state linebacker absolutely in the state of michigan his best friend is shane morris who was a quarterback at michigan going to michigan and a great kid by the way and all of a sudden john's recruitment starts to get boosted up and people are saying is he thinking about Michigan? And he comes out on Twitter and says, no, I'm going to Michigan State. I want to play for that defense. So it speaks volumes. The offense just needs to at least, it's not going to be parallel to one of the best defenses in the country, nope. but just bring it up a few notches. Continue to take baby steps. I hate to sound like, you know, what about Bob? But just take some baby steps, brother. Just keep doing it. And let's face it, this Notre Dame defense is a heck of a lot different than Youngstown State. Let's look for some life. For our second down, we look at a wide receiver, Monte Nicholson, getting looked at by basically every BCS program in the country. He visited Michigan State. He's been here in talks with the coaches, being recruited. What are you hearing about him and how he could fit into maybe this offense? A big guy, and he's out of Pennsylvania. He's a power hitter. He's big. He hits a lot like Ronnie Lott. And let me say, a lot of people talk about a wide receiver, and he certainly is. I'm not in any way denying that. But Michigan State also says, ooh, that's a guy that can play some safety now. Giggity, giggity, you. Let's get it going. And, you know, that's a guy he hits real hard. Here's what he does with his body that's really unique. He, when he gets the ball, he becomes an attacking weapon. He almost plays like a middle linebacker. He'll go hit guys. He'll run over some guys. And so that's where that safety edge shows. When you watch him, if you get to watch him on video on the Internet or whatever, he plays, he's a power wide receiver. Here's another thing that he does really well. He uses his body to get up into the air and then create separation. And if you're not, I mean, when this, I may be a six foot nine, 284 pound guy, but I've never created separation from anything unless it's a donut and it's when I eat it. But what I'm talking about with him is he's able to go up into the air and then use his body to contort, to get away from guys, to catch balls. He's got hands like stick them. So either way he ends up, State's in love with this guy. And let me tell you, this would be a monster recruit for anyone. 
he's a four-star recruit basically across the board. Mm -hmm. What is so appealing to every school is that versatility and what he could bring to this program. I would imagine if they can find a way to fit him in, it's basically just get here right. and we'll see where you fit. Well, and here's another one, and this is where that defense is helping the offense. If it was just being looked at as an offensive player, you know, he's probably taking, uh, I don't know if I want to go to Michigan State yeah. because of the offense. But with that defense, and the fact that they're going to put you know, a bunch more guys off this defensive backfield in the NFL, all of a sudden now guys perk up and they like that idea. And plus, remember this. This is a big one for you guys listening at home. Mark D'Antonio coached at Ohio State where they had guys that played both ways, yeah. defensive back and wide receiver, and he's not against it. So let me tell you, they're using that in the sales pitch too. Let's go to third down and talk about someone, uh, a teammate of someone we've mentioned on the show many times. J. Rue Campbell is coming to Michigan State. He's a junior at Cass Tech, but one of his teammates – you said to me last week, we've got to talk about this guy. Have to. And to see how he could fit under the team. Yeah, I'm going to tell you how he reminds me of. Uh, he's Edwin Baker, used to be former Michigan okay. State running back, but better. Yeah. He is a game-changing running back. And that's Mike Weber. Yeah, absolutely, Weber is. And he can, he's speed to burn. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this one. A lot of people, especially on our side of the state, especially XYZ listeners, you guys are thinking, well, he's Michigan State, he's Michigan. Ah, contrary, Mo Fair. I think the team to beat for his services is going to be the Tennessee Volunteers and Butch Jones, former Central Michigan head coach. They're going after him hard. They see him as a key cog in a recruiting class where they need some weapons. He's that kind of guy. He's Every time he touches the ball, he's a danger to score. Let me tell you how I had an NFL scout who I know very well that happened to have seen Weber uh, what he said to me, he goes, he reminds me a lot of Reggie Bush. So Lions fans, you know exactly what we're talking about here. He's that kind of player. He's a Reggie Bush kind of a player. And I'm going to tell you this, wherever he goes, Michigan, Michigan State, Tennessee, wherever it may be, he's an immediate impact player. I doubt he red shirts. He will play from day one. He is speed. He's power. He may be little. He's, yeah. they, they say 5'10". He's tiny, but he's speedy. Oh yeah. He's got that well, I could say I'm 230, and we all know it's not true. <laughs> if he's 5'10", I'm doubting it, but he's an impact player. And one of the, his most underrated thing, everyone knows about his speed and his vision, is his he is powerful, and he's not afraid of nothing. I think Mike Weber would go into a room full of sumo wrestlers and pick a fight. That's the kind of kid he is. And, again, I think that he, Tennessee's the team to beat there. When you look at what he's been able to do with J. Rue in that offense at Cass Tech, I mean, they have basically, mm -hmm. with Thomas Wiltshire, I mean, led that program into this resurgence of being a power, an absolute power in the state. And he's had the opportunity to take the carries for the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So I can see why you would say he can come here or come to t go to Tennessee, Michigan, wherever, and make that impact right away. You know, you just hit on a great point. I want to give Coach Wilshire some great credit at Cas Tech. A lot of schools have talented players, but very few schools have players that get developed, that right. guys that get coached. And when you get a Cas Tech kid, you're going to get a kid that's been well coached. You're going to get a kid that's had a coach in his face that demands more out of him. And again, that's why I think they're better players. Not that they're, you know, other guys can't run fast or other guys don't have power, but when you add the coaching, the good technique, and Weber has it, just watch him. He's a textbook. You see exactly what they're getting at Cas Tech, and that's some good coaching. Let's move on to fourth down. Uh, Lapeer West, Lapeer East, the final time those two rivals met on the football field last weekend. They're combining for schools last week, but an interesting name and maybe the biggest star in that game uh, has interest here at Michigan State as a running back. His name, what his story is, and a little tidbit of knowledge. Well, that you young got about Mr. Him. Rockwall, I mean, I'm going to go a little bit for a little bit different. You say as a running back, yeah. eh, contrary. Let me, let me put my best Lee Corso. Not so fast, my <laughs> friend. I think they see him a lot as a fullback. Okay. They see a lot of him as a linebacker. You know, they're going to be stockpiled now. Think about this with running backs because they've got Delton Williams who's redshirting. They've got Gerald Holmes who's redshirting. They got Gerald Owens coming in in next year's class, right. and they're going to add another one to that. So they see him a lot as a fullback. Let me tell you about young Mr. Rockwell. He, it's spelled differently, but he's a rock wall. I mean, this guy, he gets in there, he puts his nose into it, and he just goes. I'm going to tell you a lot of who he reminds me of, and this is probably going to surprise you a little bit, but he reminds me a lot of Todd Anderson, a former Michigan State okay. fullback, went on and played in the NFL. He puts his nose up in there. He's a grinder. He's, a, he, he's just a beef eater, and he gets in there now, and he's a corn-fed boy. And what I like about the rock wall, and that's why I always call him at Spartan Nation, but what I like about the rock wall is the way he plays. You can't play a linebacker. You can't play fullback if you're not fearless. Now, let's be honest. I love the big uglies, okay? I'm not a, you know, a, a Michael Buble crooner like you that looks good in all the suits. I like the big uglies of the line. 
He plays like a lineman. Rockwall gets in there, and you'll watch him go right in with his nose. He leads with his nose. He's the kind of guy, he's a Spartan kind of guy. He's going to do some good things. He plays linebacker as well, so he's got that you know niche where he knows how yes. to get in there and get physical. Uh, let's move on to our extra point. We always talk about a current freshman on the team. Jamal Lyles is the name you said. we got to talk about him this week. Have to. Let me tell you, first of all, this is a wonderful kid. Comes from a terrific family down in southeast Michigan. Loved XYZ, I'm sure, growing up because that's the place for sports down there. But let me tell you about him. As great of a football player, he's a better human being. As a dad, I know you're going to get married and have kids. He's the kind of kid you want your daughter to marry. Just a super high-integrity young man. He's a big defensive player. He was over at defensive end. They said, listen, we need tight ends. We need playmakers. Here's a 260-pound piece of beef that can run, that can catch, that can tackle. He can do it all. Let's move him over there. Now, let me just tell you, if you DVR the game, go home and watch the uh, Youngstown State game again. There's a play where he ran the wrong route. It was his first game as a tight end. You know what he did? He turned and showed hands like Jerry Rice, caught the ball behind him and, and, and took it in. We haven't seen a Michigan State receiver do that all year. No. And here's a brand new tight end. He brings the athleticism of a wide receiver with the size of a tight end. He's not afraid to block anyone. I mean to tell you, that guy would go into Jackson State Prison and pick a fight. He's tougher than nails. And he'd get down there, he'll block, he'll drop down and he'll do some run blocking. He'll go out and do some pass blocking. He's a good one and his ceiling is really high. Well, Mark D'Antonio said, hey, we haven't had an emerging presence at tight end, which has been a lot different than his teams in the past here at Michigan mm -hmm. State. They've always had mm -hmm. that tight end step up with Charlie Gannon, and Deion Sims. They're kind of still looking for that guy. So Lyles maybe throughout this season could develop into that guy. Is that what you're saying? Or well, at least one of the guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and I can't tell you who told me, but inside the coach's box, when Lyles turned and made that coach, it was a, a unanimous, <gasps> And that was all that was said. I asked one of the people in the box, I said, hey, what was the reaction like? It was, <gasps> you know, and the defensive coach was like, hey, we want to get him back on defense. And the offensive coach is, you can't have him. And I mean, that's what he does. And think about that. In his first game, right. as a tight end, this isn't like he came in playing the position he was recruited for, Brad. At his very first position that the guy is playing at, he's making a, <gasps> Catch? That tells you something. It don't take a donkey brain at midnight in an old tin barn to figure out that guy's got some wheels on that horse. You can get some metaphors, some similes every week from Hondo <laughs> Carpenter here. I don't know where you come up with half of these. Hey, I just got to say this. I just I stand in the presence of a Birmingham get Brother Rice guy every get week. Out of here. I don't. I, I can't speak this King's <laughs> English and croon like Michael Buble, my friend. I told him about Michael Buble. So he had never heard. I'd about never Michael heard of Buble. the man. I, I thought you. Buble. Yeah. I love me some Buble, and I hope. You guys keep coming back for more of this. Michigan State recruiting, fourth and one. Hondo Carpenter of Spartan Nation. You can find him on Twitter. You can find him online everywhere throughout East Lansing and in Metro Detroit. And in next week, we're going to have four names that people aren't talking about. You're going to find out right here on WXYZ. A big teaser. So stay tuned. Thanks for joining us as always, and we'll see you next week on WXYZ.com.